it's really blowing a gale outside today so I thought I'd do a video uh, it's always perfect time isn't it when the weather's really horrible to uh, get the videos out of the way uh, this video is the sewing and growing video for July so I'll do a quick preview and an overview of the progress through June what I'm sewing in July some of the first harvest dates which is always interesting to have a look at and then we're done so let's get started so I thought we'd start off with the growing log for June and we'll just skim through this on the computer and I'll just put a appropriate and I'll just put a appropriate photos and videos up to kind of illustrate uh, what we've got in terms of progress. So we just finished harvesting all of the green garlic but we had a few cloves left from last year uh, uh, that were starting to sprout so we decided rather than eating those now because we've got loads of um, uh, this year's garlic that we've just harvested we'd plant that as a green garlic crop and we'll see how that grows and it's actually we just planted it in the middle of the carrot beds uh, in the gap you know sort of like in the six inch, inch gap between the rows and it's actually growing remarkably well i'm quite quite pleased with it and we really love green garlic and we use it a bit like we would use leeks um anyway there we go so then i've planted my uh, sort of late winter spring varieties of purple sweat and broccoli so that's claret two successions of those and early purple and they're all growing pretty well i'm quite pleased with those uh, another succession of uh, marathon calabrese we have loads of that in fact we just started harvesting our third succession of that yesterday uh, and it's going pretty well and then some uh, cauliflower for winter, some Romanesco for early winter, uh, some purple cauliflower um, and some green cauliflowers again kind of late autumn winter time um, and then probably what will be my last batch of kale although don't hold me to that because I'm kind of prone to planting spares some red Russian which is particularly good in kind of early spring I find it, it really does um, come to life at that time just before it goes to seed so you get a nice sort of month six weeks of that there uh, some dazzling blue which we really like uh, winter boar always reliable and pentland brig and richard pill actually one of my viewers uh, sent me some seeds for that which i'm very grateful of and so i've sown two batches of that i've got my um, sprouts that I sowed for leaves in sort of february time and they're incredibly prolific at the moment i'll just pop a picture up of those um, but they tend to kind of come to an end in about August time and normally at that time I've got my main crop sprouts uh, and I'll start eating those leaves but the problem with those main crop sprouts right now is the leaves are terrible because they've been really badly kind of scorched by the three months of drought that we had in spring um, and they just I wouldn't want to eat them they just look horrible so um, I'm not really confident that we're going to get good sprout leaves for eating so I think I'll just plant another batch of those perpetual spinach and chard a few different types of chard uh, yeah these are a big favorite of ours for uh, winter and well autumn winter and spring um, and they grow I, th I we find they grow much better under cover in winter um, and early spring um, and they they're more prolific really than a true spinach so uh, yeah definitely want to try and i'm just starting to try this which is mikado spinach and i've not actually got any that's harvestable at the moment in fact i haven't got any that's actually germinated at the moment because i only planted it a couple of days ago but it's a summer spinach and so at the moment for summer spinach we really use perpetual spinach and uh, new zealand spinach but we thought we'd try this we're always looking for new things so this mikado it's an oriental spinach and it doesn't bolt in summer so you'll see what it's like um, and then we've got two more successions um, of uh, center cut squash uh, which is kind of in the trombuccino family and true trombuccinos um, and it's just kind of if a gap opens up somewhere then I'll just pop those in you do get a decent harvest off them even um, sown on the 1st of June uh, which is quite late but they're just ready for planting now um, this is my storage sowing of beetroot so I've got a really nice collection here 
uh, Cylindro, which actually didn't germinate very well, which I'm really unhappy about because it's one of my favourite storage beets, but I think I'll have enough. Bolt Hardy, it's always reliable. Burpees Golden and Boldor. Now, I really like um, Burpees Golden, but I, I had a packet of Boldor from last year, and I thought, oh, well, I'll just sell a few. And they were fantastic. The germination was amazing on them. The quality of the plants, the health of the plants was really amazing. So, yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, I've always been raving about Burpees Golden, but these Boldor, they've really impressed me. I don't really know why they're so good, but they they really are remarkable. And uh, I think I might actually do a video about um, these, the beetroots. I've got a batch under grow lights, and I've got a batch that I did just on a sunny windowsill. Um, and yeah the comparison between them is is really quite amazing so uh, yeah I might do a video on those then we've got the carrots so I sowed um, these are my sort of winter carrots really so purple haze and stromboli by the end of winter both of these you know really they're in the ground they won't really last much longer um, and I've got these Nandor as well so I've got these, these will be under cover under mesh because we get a lot of carrot fly but these are strongly resistant than Nandor to um, carrot fly so I planted 500 of these just along the edge of the bed uh, where we're going to be planting all of the winter flowering brassicas and the cabbage winter and the spring win spring and winter cabbages uh, and all of those beetroot so there's just a strip uh, about a foot that I took uh, to plant those carrots um, and as I say I don't really normally do them without cover but I thought well it's late in the year we've sort of passed the first batch of um, carrot fly and maybe these are carrot fly resistant ones so maybe they'll work and then next week actually I'm harvesting my early baking potatoes which are a mix of Charlotte and Vivaldi and so that bed's coming free and there's 90 days um, of time available to get another crop of carrots out of that same bed if I recondition that soil so I'm going to do that and we're going to see uh, how those do but obviously I needed the plants um, I needed to sow them on the 6th of June in order to get that 90 day window before I plant, replant the bed uh, with salad crops for winter um, and so I've had to plant, start them in pots and that's what I like to do for the early baking potatoes uh, is, to, is to start them off in small pots and then transplant them into the ground so um, they're doing actually quite well um, so they'll get replanted in about 10 days time or something like that um, and so it gives them you know they're in the in the pots basically for about a month um, and it's a good technique actually I like that uh, doing it that way uh, obviously for small quantities so it's only useful for sort of early and late um, uh, potatoes but it does seem to work quite well and then I've got my salads um, and so I've had a couple of successions of salads um, planted uh, sown and a lot of those are in the ground I've just got one tray left actually that's not in the ground and these were brought on under grow lights and again these were really quite amazing these are the mice mars hydro grow lights uh, which i've got in the garage to allow me to grow um, things in a relatively cool environment so they're on at night off during the day to keep the temperature as stable as possible and i'm really really impressed um, by the quality of those uh, different lettuce leaves that i've grown there and I need them as well. I need them as fast as possible. That's why I tried them under the grow lights because the weather's been so hot in, uh, for the um, previous crop of lettuces that they're all kind of running to seed about three weeks earlier than I would have expected. And so that three weeks is a real issue. Um, so I've tried to catch up with the grow lights and they've caught me up by about two weeks. So I might just scrape through if I'm lucky and golden purslane love golden purslane we've got two beds planted already this is the third uh, bed uh, it does act actually kind of uh, golden purslane it's um it will keep growing until until the sort of first frost 
but the plants kind of run out of steam I find when you're harvesting them as hard as we do so I do kind of try and get a successional sowing uh, out of those um, they just you know they, they just wear out basically um, and then some radicchio uh, two successions of those I've got another one coming in July uh, we really do like the radicchio it really adds something to the salad mixes in winter a, a really nice color amount of color there's not much red in a winter salad mix um the radicchio does provide that that red um highlight to it and it's nice and crunchy and very tasty as well and i took some cuttings off the sweet million um tomatoes so i didn't actually sow these um and those cuttings are doing okay a bit floppy um, but uh, yeah they're okay I think they'll survive so let's take a look at July that was a long overview wasn't it of June so cucumbers so we've got masses of cucumbers now in the polytunnel and I've got some behind me in the conservatory as well which are doing really nicely uh, so I've just taken my earliest uh, cucumber out of the conservatory and we've been eating that since the middle of April um, and that plant ran out of steam so we've put another one in that's growing really nicely it's got quite a few little cucumbers on it now um, and I've got another one that's up at the top of uh, one of my cabinets and again that one is just finishing and maybe one or two more cucumbers to come off that and so this uh, sowing here will replace that one um, they'll get probably planted out in about a month's time so sort of beginning of August and so we'll be harvesting those well in sort of October November time um, yeah it's really nice to have cucumbers and then we'll stop we won't have any more cucumbers until April again next year when we, when we restart harvesting um, because we're self-sufficient as much as we can with things um, and so it's kind of nice to just take a break and be fed up with cucumbers by right then but these are absolutely gorgeous these ladiva really uh, crunchy um, and fresh tasting so then i'll take some more cuttings off the tumblers and the tumbling tom reds and i'm going to bring those on uh, in the polytunnel um, and I might bring some back into the conservatory. I'm sort of wondering and hiring about whether I'll do that or not, but you'll find out. Uh, and I've got these, goodness knows how you pronounce that, latter uh, tomatoes, and apparently they're a really great early tomato. Um, so I've grown Lediva early tomatoes. We've been harvesting those for about three, three weeks now, maybe four weeks in the conservatory, um, but take up a lot of space and um, so I thought well I'll try these they're meant to be even earlier um, and I've been disappointed with the truss size of the Lediva normally you get these massive trusses which is why I planted them to get really loads of early tomatoes but no I didn't get loads I only got you know sort of a I don't know maybe 10 10 a week or something like that so not a huge amount um, and so anyway i'm going to try these and see they're apparently this sprawl a bit of a sprawling plant but we'll see what they're like i thought i would just try them see if i like the flavor of them before i sort of commit to growing those in the conservatory for the next year's early crop and then red ruble we really like that it's a fantastic uh, red kale for salad mixes but we also use it once it's sort of grown a bit bigger uh, for the smoothie mixes stromboli this is a really great uh, sort of winter carrot early winter carrot um, but it stands well in the ground and so that's the one that i'm going to put in containers this year uh, so i'll be planting those containers and they i don't know whether i'm going to leave them outdoors or whether i'm going to put them in the polytunnel it doesn't really matter for now um, but anyway they're going to be in containers and we'll see how those go and then some more lettuces nice crunchy lettuce there a maize another nice crunchy one and then these loose leaf ones uh, it's always just useful to sow successions of lettuces you never know what's going to happen sometimes you lose a lot to sort of pests and you know you're sort of left in the lurch if you haven't got some spares and then my main crop 
of winter um, potatoes so these are the charlottes these actually won't be harvested for a long time so we'll probably start harvesting these around Christmas but we won't finish harvesting these until April time which is when we get our early potatoes in April so we have a continu continuity of um, of new potatoes uh, by doing it that way charlotte is my favorite variety for this you don't get a huge crop so don't expect to be sort of feeding you know every meal or anything like that but it's nice to get just one or two meals a week um, of new potatoes just provide some nice variety in the diet in addition to the main crop potatoes which will be in store and then i've got um some centre cut squash in the polytunnel and it's doing it's done really well we've had loads of fruits off it um but it's coming to the end of its life now and probably in about three or four weeks it'll be finished and so i'm going to put these um purple climbing beans in its place um and let them kind of grow up into the canopy of the polytunnel um and i hope i can keep them going into sort of october you know october november um climbing french beans are self fertile so there'll be no issue with insects pollinating them or anything like that so hopefully they'll just keep going the only thing is once it drops below 50 degrees you know maybe they'll stop i don't really know i've not tried climbing french beans in the polytunnel before i've done runner beans and to be honest they didn't really i got about two weeks more of harvest out of them than i did the outside ones um but uh, anyway, we'll give that a go. And my first sowing of spinach, giant winter. So why am I doing a giant winter when I could be doing a, a kind of more traditional autumn spinach? Well, I thought just for this early crop, I just get this one to try because this is the one we're planning to grow as our main winter spinach in the polytunnel uh, and in some of the low tunnels. And we've never tried it before so i thought well i'll try this one as an early crop see whether we like it and if we do we'll still we'll have time um if, sorry, if we don't we'll still have time to switch to an alternative spinach for winter so we thought we'd give that a go um and duncan this is will be our first sowing of spring cabbages uh these will get planted out where the runner beans and the french beans are um so sometime in sort of September, October time, hopefully that's where they'll go. They'll go kind of underneath the um, frame of the beans. And of course there'll be many successions of spring cabbages to come. And then there'll be one more sowing of Lediva. Maybe I might do one in uh, August as well, but there'll definitely be one in late July. Just to keep them going, because again, the plants, as I said, do get exhausted. I think they'll keep going in the conservatory for quite a while, provided the temperature in here doesn't drop below about 50 degrees, um, which it doesn't really. And it's very cheap to just provide that little bit of extra um, heat just to keep it above 50 degrees. So sometimes it will go down to, say, 40, 45, um, even when it's frosty outside, because there's a lot of walls and concrete floor and everything saves a lot of heat uh, during the day. Um, so just to top it up cost me about 30 pence a night or something like that and it means I can do all sorts of interesting things in the conservatory if I just keep it just above that 50 degree mark so that is pretty much everything that uh, I'm doing in July so I thought I'd also just quickly show you my uh, first harvest dates I think this is always quite interesting so the first calabrese was in May, uh, May the 17th, and then we had our first uh, Oregon sugar pod peas, May 19th, broad beans, May 20th, garlic scapes and all that sort of thing. And then we had our first cherries actually for June 5th, which is pretty good. That was two weeks nearly earlier, well actually exactly two weeks earlier than last year. Um, New Zealand spinach, didn't do quite so well with that actually for some reason i think it's all those late frosts in may um not that little, back a little bit we had our first uh, french beans june the 7th first tomatoes june the 7th 
I was disappointed with that. I thought I'd get them a bit earlier, but anyway. First um, celery June the 7th, first runner beans June the 7th, first onions. We really were happy with the tough ball. They did really well for us over winter. Uh, we could have taken them earlier, but obviously we had loads of, of onions in store. Uh, so basically just as we finished this stored onions, we started harvesting those. First of the centre cut squash. They were really nice. We got those on the June the 12th from the polytunnel. Um, and we've actually been having, um, let me just go back, courgettes. When did we have the first courgettes? I don't know. Can't, I can't see it on here. Anyway, before we had the centre nut squ centre cut squash. So if you're going to go for early, um, anything, anything in the kind of uh, cucurbit family, then um, courgettes is the one to do. We grow ambassador in the polytunnel, and then centre nut squash is really great. Um, golden purslane, fourteenth. First beetroot, God, I did so badly with beetroot. And again, it's kind of partly because I'm just not that motivated because I've still got beetroot in store. It's still really nice quality. Uh, so I'm not really highly motivated to grow early beetroot, but I just feel like I want to do it. So next year, I'm going to grow some early beetroot in the polytunnel and in one of my coal frames. But anyway, June the 14th, uh, first of the purple uh, French beans, June the 14th. And then, of course, the gar we did our main crop harvest of the garlic and elephant garlic and all that sort of thing. Raspberries June the 17th. I was really pleased with the peppers. So we did our first harvest of green peppers uh, on June 20th. Uh, the California Wonder and the Long Red Marconi. Really good size, full size, effectively. Um, and we got loads and loads of fruits on the plants. And they're just getting a bit too crowded. Um, and I thought, well, I'll start picking them. Hopefully we'll get some more flowers, keep the uh, plants growing. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know where I've got this on here. First harvest of the Charlotte potatoes, June, 20, June 20th. I mean, that's not very impressive, is it? But obviously we've been harvesting um, first earlies since uh, sometime in April. Um, the first actually ripe uh, chili peppers, these cyan peppers, on June 20th. So actual ripe peppers. So I was really pleased about that. Um, first burpees golden. The thing is, the burpees golden. If you sow it too early, it really doesn't thrive. It's not as good as Baltardi. Uh, so there's no point really trying to push the date on that, unless you do it in the polytunnel. So I might just do it in the polytunnel because we do run out of that in store a bit earlier than the red beetroot. Uh, just because it doesn't store quite so well and the first gooseberry so that's basically our first harvests in june quite a nice uh, variety but of course we've you know we have been harvesting all year in fact we've harvested five thousand five hundred pounds worth of veg so far this year so almost um halfway through the year well actually halfway through the year and we've harvested about half the food that we normally harvest, so about £11,000 in total. Um, although I think we might break that record this year. Um, anyway, so I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.